Hello everyone and welcome. I'm Derek Elliott from Dirk.com and today we are going to be watching me do the entirety of a portion of a freelance project that I completed uh, it looks like on December 14th, 2020. So almost a year ago. Uh, the time of recording is 6 p.m. on December 30th, 2021. So a little over a year ago I did this. Uh, but this is some animations I posted recently of a wallet I did for Distill Union. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go ahead and press play on the video. What we're going to be watching is a 20 hour uh basically recording of me yeah, doing this project in its entirety for some reason i decided to record it i should probably do that more often honestly because it's kind of a uh kind of a cool thing and uh you know i can look back and see my own efficiencies uh, what i'm doing here is pulling a little magnet model i had from uh, the other project i did as as part of the same one um but yeah this is a uh, this is a long one. It's it's 20x speed. So yeah, you're watching it. It's all happening in about an hour. Um, but that's over the course of 20 hours, if you all understand, um, you know, what 20x means in math. But grab some popcorn, uh, make yourself comfortable. I know I'm going to be doing that. I've been meaning to get this video recorded for a while now. Um, so yeah, grab, grab a drink. I'll, I'll try to try to talk you through what I'm doing. Um, but yeah, basically, so I had a physical, sorry, I'm going to take a sip here. Ah, we're drinking uh, canned water this evening. Um, but yeah, I had a physical sample of the wallet that this is. And um, I was doing a lot of measuring with calipers and stuff right here. Um, the reason this was kind of tricky is because I needed to animate it quite a bit. And um, I needed to make sure I had pretty clean geometry. Sometimes when there's like, you know, like a background element or something and, um, you know, you can be a little sloppier with, uh, with the model, but in this case I was going to need to animate it for one and then also just be able to pull it apart, do a lot of deformations and things like that. And you kind of don't know, or at least I didn't know exactly what I was going to want to do with it. So I wanted the model to be as good as possible. Um, just some clean geometry. Another reason for doing it, um, like this with better topology was that I knew I'd want to add detail with like a bevel modifier and things like that and sometimes that can kind of break if you've got uh, crappy geometry. Uh, speaking of crappy things, there I was uh, flipping through my Spotify trying to find some good songs while I was jamming out making uh, 3D models. Gotta have, gotta have good songs when you're doing that. So yeah, what I'm doing here is just trying to um, get kind of the basic dimensions down those magnets are only on, those larger magnets are just on the one side, but I think I started off with like a, a mirror modifier. Um, what I'm doing there is making a little slit for where some cards go into. I don't think that's on both sides. No, it's not on both sides. Uh, it's just on the one side. Maybe I got confused when I was doing that. Um, so yeah, probably taking a lot of... Okay, so that was, I think, I'm, I think that little rectangle I made was a... A card like a credit card sized plane just so I could make sure that it was going to fit properly um, so there I am just kind of rounding out where the magnets sit into the leather section of the wallet <laughs> I think I think I thought it looked like a face right there so I was just uh, having a little fun probably knew I was recording too so you know I always, I always try to turn up the jokes a little bit when I'm recording for you guys and gals um, this is a little portion of the wallet that uh, there's like a magnet in there too that's kind of submerged in the leather to help it to help it close basically. Um, looks like I'm switching into a matte cap there just so I can see the see the surfaces a little bit better. Using the knife tool a lot right here to try to get edge flow how I want it. Because again, I mean, the other thing is I was going to be doing subdivision, so just trying to keep even edge flow. This is honestly one of the more complex models I've ever made. Um, so it's a good example for uh, this type of video. Um, all right, what I'm doing there, I think, is trying to add a little bit of detail. And maybe when I record this video, don't hold me to it, but I'll uh, 
try to show some actual footage of the wallet so you can see what I'm really working on. But yeah, a lot of this process at this point was measuring things with my calipers, um, you know, getting that into the model, making sure things look right. A lot of times you might see me pull off just like a single edge and I'll use the edge length uh, feature to be able to just use it as kind of like a little mini ruler. So it looks like what I'm doing there is finally making the whole thing solid. Um, so I made it super fat. Um, so so this is only this whole part is only a few millimeters thick, but I made it really fat just because, yeah, for this part where I needed to create that separation, like if I really if I actually made it too thin, it would be kind of difficult to um, go in there and you know just see what you're doing. So I just made the thing bigger than it needed to be because it's easy after the fact to kind of scale it down. But when I was working on it, I wanted it to be um, just big and chunky, a little easier to check. Gosh, I brought myself uh, three canned waters to my sitting session here in a little refrigerated bag, uh, but they're not going down very quick. I'm talking too much. Everybody just uh, just pay attention and you know take a sip. I'll, I'll be watching too. So yes, uh, using a lot of the knife tool here. K is going to be your command there. And there's the dog. And I, I saw like right when I sat down to start recording that I had an Amazon package on the way and I was like, do I need to wait for that to get here? I should probably pause to uh, to go get it. So let's uh, let's pause the video at 6.07. All right, package has been secured. Dog has been calmed. So yeah, this was um, this was a really tricky part because in here I needed to um, yeah this whole thing needed to kind of like come apart. You know, it's made of like many pieces of leather, which I eventually understood as I was really really digging into the the physical sample to see kind of how it was made and and honestly I wanted to follow a pretty much similar process for you know when I was modeling and I wanted to to line up kind of the way the real thing did, but of course only to the extent that I need it to. Um, so it looks like I did apply a solidify modifier there. Just kind of checking, making sure things are gonna work out. Um, so yeah, I, d I don't think I, I guess, I guess I needed the solidify for certain things that were kind of more like one dimensional. So there I am kind of scaling it down, seeing what it's actually gonna look like and then realizing that I kind of messed up my edge flow from the top and the bottom, which they don't have this, they wouldn't need to have the same edge flow because they are a little bit different on the top and bottom, but, you know, there's sort of a, for the general edge flow of the whole thing, there's kind of a best way, and I wanted them to, to match up for the most part. So there I am just kind of scaling down um, the, th the whole thickness of the thing. And here I am using, it looks like a little, yeah, basically a little ruler to kind of check my dimensions. I think the whole thing ended up being maybe a tad fatter or thinner. I don't remember, but, um, you know, it, it's a soft good, so there's a little bit of affordance with the dimensions, you know, depending on how many cards and stuff you had put in it. Then this is a wallet, by the way, too. I don't know if I explained that, but, you know, the amount of cards that are in there. Okay, so here... I think what I'm doing now is trying to think about that little seam area where I'm going to put the stitching. Um, and then there I'm, I'm shaping the, the kind of bumps that are in the leather. So yeah, there's a little bit of a... Uh, the leather is sort of sculptural in the way that it's stamped and pressed to uh, accept cards and things like that. So there I am doing a little deformation test with a simple deform good way to just kind of see how your model is looking you know if it's if it's bendy enough or you're going to need more geometry in certain places so here i am adding some threading onto a curve i think i would have extracted a portion of the mesh to create that curve so that it lined up perfectly and then just arraying it arraying you know a small little thread model basically along that and then uh Go ahead and add the leather material. Now this material, 
it's not like it would have taken me that long to set up anyways, but um, I I already had that pretty much built out from the the last portion of the project where I did the little keychain animation. Um, so the model is coming together here, just kind of looking at it in lighting, checking things out. You know, the model's not done yet, obviously, but I find myself a lot of times like switching into lighting to uh, try to get a, a sense of how it's looking, just to give myself a break. So there's some leather I was looking at on Polygon, it looked like. I don't know if I did that as an alternative. What am I Googling there? I think maybe how to use a two normal maps. I don't know. I Google stuff all the time still, by the way. Sometimes people ask me questions on Instagram thinking I'll just know the answer to everything. And and I do, but uh, there's some things I don't know the answer to. But most of your Instagram questions, I am able to answer. Not saying you shouldn't try Googling yourself. That's the point. That's what I was trying to get at. It's like part of learning Blender is knowing how to Google it. So what am I doing there? Something about the stitching. Maybe the stitching didn't need to go all the way around. I think I ended up doing t the stitching two different ways. I know one thing that I was worried about was when I deformed the wallet, how I would get the stitching to move with it. Because I've done stitching plenty of times, but it's usually on a static object or the stitching itself is not going to be moving because here I am so the wallet is two base I think they're pretty much identical except one's like a male one's a female um, parts so there I'm duplicating it and seeing how it looks together looks like I'm assigning some shape keys there so I think did I I, I might have assigned a shape key to the curve object also okay so this is a cool little trick I do actually where I I make these planes on the end of my end of my thread object and just make it like a black material and it kind of makes it look like the threading is going into whatever you do it see that pretty clever I think you can even like flip the normals the wrong way and it'll kind of it'll kind of render like a hole a little bit not sure exactly what I'm doing there but something along those lines yeah so controlling it so that it's not totally black but it looks kind of like it fades down into there I won't charge you for that tip. That's a, that's a free tip for those of you who are watching this incredibly long, boring tutorial. Or wait, it's not a tutorial. It's a it's like a time lapse while Derek drinks canned water. Ah, it's delicious. So yeah, trying to get the threading looking right. Something makes me think I ended up completely ditching all of this. But maybe not. It's looking pretty good, at least to me. Here I am reviewing myself. Okay, so this is a little pull tab that comes out. Looking for a nylon strap material. Changed my mind. I was like, I'll just make it procedurally because dang, why not? And just looks like a little bit of a wave texture with a curve. Now this is another thing that did need to animate. So I needed it to kind of come out of there. So I made a, made a little curve object. Now, if you watch my shoe tutorial, I'm doing basically the same thing I did to create the strap. I'm just kind of creating this multi-directional sort of nylon elastic thing. Folding that over, putting a little bit of a solidify, a little bit of bevel, give it some dimension. Looks like what I got here is a, just a little bit of a render test. Oh yeah, adding that edge loop to kind of bring down the threading so it looks like it's really pinching the wallet and I keep adjusting the threading for some reason I guess I'm not liking the angle of it I think with this it might have been something where I'm, I'm looking at the physical sample and it looks one way and I'm trying to duplicate that in 3d but maybe it's not like looking as good in 3d um, you know so there's definitely scenarios when I'm doing this type of project where I take a little bit of liberty uh, creative liberty if you will to Make adjustments that, you know, represent the product honestly, but, you know, either make it look a little bit better or uh, make it look, um, you know, just make it a little bit easier for, for me to work with. It's kind of a mix. It's a balance of finding things that, uh, you know, 
you want the product to look good, but at the same time, you know, you need it, you need it to be able to work for you too. Um, so here I'm trying to steal somebody's credit card information. Just kidding. I'm trying to find some, uh, this is so dumb. I was like looking for a credit card texture. Like it's not, it's just kind of like silly. It's like, I feel like I should be saving myself time. All right. There I'm getting the distill logo and, um, Oh yeah, these are some of the, so I had some CAD drawings for some of these things. I was just pulling apart the, uh, pulling the logo out. I think I decided I was going to make my own credit card and just use that one as like an underlay. Now this ended up being a freaking pain in the butt, making this little chip for some reason. I just couldn't, uh, couldn't decide on what it sh should like look like. I don't know. I was trying to be such a small detail, but I got really hung up on it. And then I'm like, ah, I don't need to be doing this myself, Derek, just buy a credit card model, it's so easy. And then I'm thinking like, oh, but it's silly, why would you buy a credit card model, so you're just a plane. And then I'm like, oh, I don't want to make the texture. But then I was like, oh, well, I'm going to change the texture anyways to make it look like a distill card. Oh, and then I got a random name generator here to pick a name until I found one I liked. What did I go with? Credit card front font. Found a font there. Looking good, looking good. Credit card number generator. I wonder if those like work. I don't know. I just could have typed in random numbers, but I'm trying to be as authentic as possible. You know, gotta have the, uh, gotta have a real fake credit card number. Henry Scott was the chosen name. Could put my own name on there. Could put Nate's name on there. Um, but, you know, went for uh, Henry Scott. Good guy. Went to college together. Just kidding. If your name is Henry Scott, for real, don't make no fake YouTube account named Henry Scott. And here I am, an illustrator. I was going to say, if your name's Henry Scott, then leave a comment because, wow, so cool. So yeah, in, in Illustrator, trying to look all professional. Um, I think I still did not end up going with that. Something about me did not like it. Okay, so credit card. Here I am getting the map set up. Roughness, metallic. So I was using this to make, yeah, that little chip portion wanted to be metallic. Did I end up just stealing one there? No, I didn't steal it exactly. I'm tracing the lines. Something about the ones I was designing myself just were not looking right. I felt like I had to get an official one. See, it looks better. All right, I think what I'm doing there is making a metalness map so that I could have certain parts of the texture be metallic. Probably could have done that with some fancy color ramp work, but I must have thought it'd be easier just to make a separate map for it. Because this would be a pretty low res JPEG, not like any mega file sizes to deal with. So there I'm making a little bit of a metallic, a little bit of bump. That could have been a bump map. Oh, there's another bump map, giving the whole card a little bit of a little bit of a swiped texture to it. Again, these were like pretty small details that no one would really see, but you gotta go the extra mile, you know. Got to make that look good. There's me emailing Nate. I'll probably blur this portion out because I had at least a couple phone numbers in there. Probably sending him some updated renders. I know this project in particular, I was a little, uh, a little slow to get the whole shebang done. Sorry, Nate. I know you're watching. <laughs> um, okay, so yeah, doing some renders here. So I think I, I was just doing these to send probably to Nate as of like a, uh, here's where things are going, making sure, you know, I didn't have anything completely wrong or anything, but also just to give, give them an update. I'm, uh, I'm not always the best at giving my clients updates along the way. I like to just surprise them at the end, but that's not really, that's not really the best way to work. So I've been trying to get better about giving people, uh, Updates along the way. So I'm just trying to find some cool angles here. 
you know, maybe starting to think just a little bit about the animation. Um, man, it really seems like it's coming along though. We're only 20 minutes into this and got a lot left. <laughs> I honestly do not know what I do for the next 40 minutes, but I suppose we'll find out here together as I sip more. Oh yeah, Derek, that's a good looking render. So what am I doing here? Something, okay, the uh, threading. It didn't come like all the way around. Yeah, I think as I was making changes to the model, I was having to make changes to the threading. This was kind of not a good workflow. And I swear I, I swear I ditched this and changed something. See how it keeps just like, it's like not poking through evenly. That's because they're separate parts. I should have had a, you know what? I don't think I really knew much about the shrink wrap modifier when I did this. Okay, here we've got a nice long pause where I'm probably taking a break in, in the time-lapse world. But yeah, I, um, oh, there we're back. And yeah, I don't think I used the shrink wrap modifier much. Obviously, I used it a ton in my shoot tutorial. But I almost wonder if I could have like shrink wrapped the curve to the model would that have worked i don't really know whatever way i ended up doing it just wasn't uh wasn't the best also the the little trick with creating the shadows on the end of the thread object that can break pretty easily if it's not even on the surface or some holes will appear you know like way bigger than others and you i think i'm i think i'm noticing that right there doing a lot of proportional editing just to kind of sync things down into into place but threading is definitely giving me a little bit of trouble now this is the type of thing that maybe in the future for how not visible it was in this particular project if I came into a similar situation maybe I would maybe I would not uh, model the threading modeled threading looks so nice but um, you know, until I figure out a better way to manage it. And it always depends on the project, what you're going to need to actually do with it, how close you're going to get, things like that. But it definitely gave me some trouble here, but I think I was in too deep with it. I didn't want to give up. I think one thing I considered doing was just making a threading part of the wallet object. But then you'd run into some issues with how it um, how it deforms in some cases, you know, if it wasn't synced up to the surface. So there I am adding the other little pull tab that's on the other side. Now that one I don't think needed to slide. It looks like I'm st I'm adding the curve, but I don't think this one actually needs to animate. Or maybe this is the one I'm going to animate. I think I only animated it on one side. Alright, so here I am trying to do like a really shoddy little stitching thing for this part. I think I was just trying to fake it with like some seams and just adding some edge loops with a different material to kind of make it look like a little threaded thing. But once again, threads. <laughs> First I was doing model threads, those weren't working out, too complicated, and then I tried to do really simple threads, which was just like a strip of a different material. Then that didn't work out. I think I ended up actually uh, making a little texture for the threads on the, the pull tab piece. Alright, so here I am. I, okay, so I think I was modeling, yeah, modeling with shape keys there. So I wanted to, I wanted to still have the model be f like lay flat the way I modeled it but then I wanted to I wasn't actually ever going to show it like that because it would it would mostly be like pressing into itself um, but I used the shape key to kind of keep the one flat version available to me so I could remove the shape key if I needed to work on the model a little bit more or you know if I noticed an error down the line that's one thing when you're making a complicated model like this it can be uh when you're, you're looking at so many different little parts and pieces of it and kind of going to different areas, you can make changes in one area and not realize that it affected it in another area. 
sometimes that's after you've you know kind of gone too far and it becomes difficult to track backwards so that's a little bit of an issue now i almost never have that many vertex groups on an object um, but this one i had a lot because it was it became very difficult to select all these different little areas you know like where the magnets are edge loops the outside ring um, you know if, if you're gonna have to kind of keep keep coming back to these different areas then then being able to uh, use vertex groups to select those quickly is, is good so here I am I think I was just trying to make the wallet as slim as possible it really is a pretty slim wallet and you know, the way I modeled it obviously was pretty fat but I wanted it to be able to um, you know look as slim as possible but not unrealistically so you know the wallet in real life obviously can't run into itself, but in 3D I could kind of fake it and squish, squish things into each other that you know would like pass through each other. But that's obviously not very realistic. And you know, with this coming apart and everything, I didn't want to have too much of that going on. Hope everybody's uh, having a good time. I'm having a nice time, just watching myself work. <laughs> it's a uh, Wow, yes, absolute blast. It's a lot of, I wish I worked this fast. I would have a lot more uh, relaxing life, I think, if if I could work in 20x speed. Okay, so here, I don't know if I just forgot to do this earlier or was putting it off, but I think I'm trying to connect the inside portion or maybe just round that corner. I don't think I was going to model the whole like interior where the cards go because I just didn't need to, but I did need to treat this edge a little bit so that probably so that the bevel worked successfully or maybe so that the solidify didn't clip so bad. I noticed it. I don't know where exactly it was happening, but I noticed a couple places where the, there was geometry that was just like shooting out, which sometimes that happens when there's like really bad pinching. Um, I'm not sure what that weird shading is. That might be a... Okay, so I've got... Yeah, it looks like i got a bunch of different shape keys set up there for for operating the different parts of the, the model. So that's like... Those little things like pinch open and they have a... Uh, you can slide your credit cards into them. So I knew that was something I needed. So yeah, I didn't really know what I was going to do for the animation. This one was definitely very like feature-focused though. Where I knew I needed to show that those different parts open up. I knew I needed to show cards coming in and out. I knew I ne needed to show the little pull tab working. I knew the whole model was going to need to come apart with you know the two halves, so I could put a key in there. So I'm kind of just yeah, I'm just getting the model ready as best as I can to be like flexible, so that when I get to the animation part, which hopefully is soon because that's more exciting, I um you know, I would kind of not have to worry about doing any more modeling. It just, I kind of, you know, if you're working on a team, obviously there's somebody who like does the model, hands it off to the animator. Um, but when I am also the animator, I had to make sure that things work well for myself. So I think what I'm doing there is just adding a little distill logo to the corner. There's a little spot where there's the logo is kind of embossed into the leather. So just adding that. We got magnets. How do they work? That's a joke. They work by um, moving on. We are adding some threading. Still, yeah. I don't know why the uh, I don't know why the threading was just watching watching this back is kind of painful because I know it was not fun when I was doing it. it just wasn't working out for me. All right, looks like I'm trying to slim the wallet up even more. Once you've added shape keys, though, it's it's kind of hard to start messing with your mesh too much. So yeah, I think what I'm doing is just trying to manage the the bendiness of the wallet, but have the <laughs> have the threading stay with it when it bends. I may have ended up having just a shape key on the threading object and a shape key on the wallet object. 
and then just ended up having to animate them exactly together. Maybe, I, yeah, maybe I didn't do any groundbreaking change to, to the threading. I'm sure spending a lot of time making it look right here. I think that there are, nobody go back and look closely, but I think there might've been a small part of the animation where if you were really looking closely, you could see the threading kind of intersects itself. But as far as I know, this video has been viewed probably well over a hundred thousand times. And nobody emailed me and said, uh, Derek, the threading is intersecting. So we'll call that a job well done. No, but for real, it's, um, it's always balance with a project like this. You got to make sure that things are looking good as best you can, you know, add the, add the swipey texture to the, to the credit card, even though no one will see it. Um, because there's other areas where you may fall slightly short, which would be threading intersecting itself. Okay. So I had a CAD model from Nate of the money clip. So I'm using that here. Um, but I basically remodeled it myself because, um, the CAD model was just a little funky. And again, I wanted it to be able to work super nice for me with bevels and subdivides and things like that. So, um, I think I just remodeled that. Um, I believe I did probably use his CAD for that part though. Now that fabric texture there is actually one that I think I did create myself. I don't know. I don't remember if I was able to get a larger sized photo of the fabric from Nate or if I, I think I might've had a part of a different product that had that same fabric and I was able to take a picture of it to get a texture. Um, cause I had some samples of like the little keys and things like that, but it's really not a lot of fabric on each one of those. So it was hard to hard to like get a texture from it without a lot of like tiling. I really needed like a bigger piece of fabric to make a, a good texture I could use. Um, but that's what that was. Yeah. Okay. So it looks like I'm adding a little bit of a backdrop there, adding a little credit card, making that fit in there. So yeah, see with that credit card, it's not like a, like a full size credit card fits there, but I think I only in the model, made it like a short stubby little card because I think that it was starting to poke through the mesh further down the line. Um, so I kind of faked, you know, it in real life, it would fit in there, but it was going to be too tricky for me to like keep the model nice and tight and be able to, cause you just, you just can't have all these like razor thin margins, um, uh, in 3d cause you'll too, too much of a risk of things clipping and, um, and yeah, I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't really need to, doesn't really need to fit in there. You just need to see that there is a card in there. Uh, so that, that's why that one ended up being kind of stubby. Okay. So I think this was another, this is just a really tricky area geometry wise. I was trying to sync this all up, make it tighter, get it right, get it tight, playing with some threading. Gosh, yeah, this was a, beast of a model. So 30 minutes in times 20, that's like 10 hours. Yeah, I guess halfway. So, so this was an extreme model, but this is, this is not the type of model. You know, a lot of times I'll say that, oh, you know, you don't really need to be that good at modeling. You can, okay. So here's my, <laughs> looks like a different attempt at doing the threading. All one object, no curves. Uh, yeah, that's not going to work, Derek. Or is it? Okay, so I see what I'm doing there. Rather than having it be arrayed, I'm trying to make it like sit down in there like that. Is it working for me? I don't know, I really invested a lot of time in that other threading. Um, but yeah, what I was saying is that normally you can either be provided models a lot or you can download them yourself, but... When it comes to a product like this and many other products, there is not an animatable, beautiful model. Um, so you do have to make it. And, um, and yeah, sometimes they're pretty complicated. Um, this is definitely one of the more complicated models I've ever had to make. You know what? I'll go ahead and say it right now. I think this is the hardest thing I've ever had to model. 
because it's just it's a lot of detail and a lot of really tight areas and again if i wasn't if i was just rendering this still it would not have been nearly as hard because i would have faked a lot of stuff you know none of the interior would have been modeled um, none of those details it would have been yeah it, it just you know i could have done a lot more, more textures definitely wouldn't have modeled the threading or if i did you know it wouldn't have to deform So yeah, very intense, but a reason to have some ability to model. I know, um, yeah, I don't know. It seems like a lot of people actually that do animation don't also do modeling, which, you know, I think most people who can do animation can do a little bit of modeling, but there are definitely times where modeling gets far beyond simple and gets pretty, pretty advanced. Okay, what am I doing there? Oh, hooks. I think I'm... I think rather than doing rather than doing shape keys, I was like, well, maybe what I should do is use a hook object to control the edges because then I can use the same hook to pull on the threading and the model itself. So I was thinking that would be a way to get my threading to stay aligned. Um, but for some reason, I guess I decided against that. Okay, so I think we did ditch the other threading. And now it's just one, now I've got it just as one long curved object rather than an array along a curve. Okay, you know what? I think I might have done that. Why would I have done that? Maybe just so it's easier to edit with proportional editing because it was all one object. Yeah, it looks like that's working out a little bit better. Yeah, so I'm just adding shape keys for the wallet portion as well as shape keys for the thread object. I don't know why I didn't just join the I don't know why I didn't just join the thread to the wallet object. Seems like that would be a lot easier. I don't know. I'm sure some people will leave comments below, right? Like and subscribe, by the way. Leave comments about how I could have done this in an hour instead of 20 hours. There's probably a lot of things I could have done differently. Here we are pausing again. And we're back. Looks like, uh, oh, completely missed. Apparently I did a little bit of animation there. Okay, so I must be feeling pretty good about the model. Saying, okay, Derek. 10 hours is enough time on one little model of a wallet. Let's do some animation. Let's do that good, good, the animation, baby. So I think during the modeling process, there's my stubby credit card there. Yeah, so I think during the modeling process, I was thinking obviously quite a bit about, I was thinking a lot about the animation while I was doing the modeling probably and I I had probably been quite a bit um, leading up to it oh this was a um, so I think what I did here was I was getting really slow playback with the all the subdivision and I wanted to be able to see the animation in more real time so I created these empties and um, or I just created one empty <laughs> get it um, I, I created these empties that were what would animate the two halves. And then I made a kind of dummy model of the, it's convenient that I paused right here. Um, I made a dummy model of the wallet halves so that I could see it play back in more real time. Now, since then I have found out that there's a way that you can get your playback. I think it's in that, the bottom left corner, there's like a little button playback that will, um, that will, you can do something where it'll like, it'll just skip frames, but give you real time playback. Like, so you can watch it back in 30 frames per second. Um, so I'll have to try that next time we run into this situation. But, but yes, you know, when I'm animating, I want to be watching it kind of in real time. So you can really get a feel for um, what it's like. But um, if you've got a really complicated model, sometimes, especially with shape keys and subdivision, it's not going to, it's not going to play back that fast, um, depending on your computer specifications, of course. But yeah, I made these little dummy objects just to be able to see that playback in more real time. <clears throat> a 
There we go. We got a nice little, uh, nice little flippy floppy there. Something must have been really distracting me. Probably uh, my wife, Caitlin, asking me what I want for Christmas or something, given that this was recorded in uh, December last year. And uh, yeah, that would have been around the time where she starts thinking about Christmas presents. Way too early for me. I typically think about them uh, right before I need to get them. In fact, uh, I stayed home for Christmas this year, or sorry, for the holidays, and my wife did go home, and I was out today on December 30th, uh, five days after Christmas, and I, I just went out to the store and bought her some gifts. Um, so that's how on it I am with Christmas gifts. I went out and got her some stuff on the 30th because, um, yeah, she's out of town and she's going to be, she's going to be home tomorrow. So yeah, that's, that's literally when that, that's how ahead of time I'm getting the gifts. It's five days late because that's when she's coming home. Probably should do some laundry and stuff instead of recording this, but here we are. Here you are. Hope you're, uh, <laughs> hope you're having a good time hanging out with me. Surprised you haven't said anything yet. I've just been talking. Are, are you gonna, you gonna say something back? You just, you're just watching me, creepy. Just kidding. I hope you're having a blast. I hope you're learning something. I know I am. I'm learning about ways to do things faster and better, and reflecting on myself from a year ago. I always say that if you any any time I have to, sometimes people ask me like how long it takes to do something, and um, here we can see exactly how long it takes to do it, but. I'll often follow that up with a, like, but if I did it again, it would, wouldn't take as long because, you know, not so much with the modeling, but definitely with animation and any other more creative part of 3d stuff is, you know, for me, at least a, a ton of time is just spent coming up with coming up with the idea and like, what do you want to look like? And just kind of moving things around, adjusting them. And um, that's a really slow process. Um, but, you know, if I was going to take any of my, even my most complex animations and, and go back and just do it again, knowing what it needs to look like exactly, it wouldn't take me near as long because there's no creativity there. It's just pure execution. And the execution can take a long time, but um, I would say more time consuming, well, hopefully more time consuming is the coming up with the idea because I think that's what, that's what should take the most time. Um, that's why I'm also not the best giving clients updates is because usually... When I should be giving them an update, I'm like staring at the sky on my couch, trying to think of how to make their project look cool. Oh, look at this. I'm watching a, uh, what's up, CG Matter, Default Cube, watching how to make stacks of money. I think I had seen that. He had a tutorial on that. So I um, did that. Oh, check this out. I think I uh, added a little Dirk.com. Look at this. For all, <laughs> dang, I'm a freaking criminal. I know no one caught that. Like I'm even adding a little bit of, a little rough up detail there. It says Dirk on the bill. That may not have ever even appeared. I probably folded the bill the wrong way. Okay, so there I am checking the size. Now I don't know. I I mean I guess I followed whatever. Uh, default cubes tutorial was there but yeah adding a displacement texture to give those a little ripplyness checking the material making sure I got the top and the bottom adding some edge loops so that I can bend it keep the dimensions good though okay so here's scaling scaling out making the stack that way Lovely, lovely, beautiful, beautiful. Some creases, some subdivide, some slight adjustments to make our stack of money gorgeous. This is not legal tender. This is blender tender. <laughs> That's hilarious. Okay, so adding a little curve there so the the legal tender can slip up onto the metal bender while we model here in Blender. Oh yeah, that's looking good. So I've got my model coming apart. Money slides in. Definitely had to give this a little animation, right? A little shape key action. 
So yeah, basically this is a uh, it's like a money money clip. And you could hardly see it in the animation, but it did make it so that the money clip bends just a little bit. This was the this is definitely the most fun part. It's like once you once you got that model painstakingly created, then you can uh yeah, you can start playing with it. You start to have some fun. Make it look cool. So I got the money clip. Money popping in. Popping in, popping off. So yeah, basically the model, I wanted it to come apart. Everything goes into it, and then it smacks back together. Key and all flies in there. What am I adjusting there? Jeez, come on, Derek. Move on. I think I'm trying to just make it feel good. A lot of it's messing with... Uh, Messing with curves. I'm sure you all are all looking at different parts of the screen. I'm kind of just watching the viewport, which I guess is probably what most of you would be watching too, but take a look at the graph editor. It's probably where I'm doing most of my work right now, actually. Well, it doesn't look like it right now, but just trying to make things feel smooth, balanced. Got a lot of comments on this animation that it looks just so smooth. And it's easy, it just uh, it just takes 20 hours. It's not that hard. There was uh, somebody who messaged me on Instagram the other day. Sorry for watching, What I don't recall what your name was, but they said, Derek, I've been, I've been using Blender for like three months and I just cannot get my stuff to look as good as yours. And I was like, well, it took me 13 years, buddy. Buddy pal, no hate. I mean, I wanted my stuff to look good after I'd been using Blender for three months, but uh, what I did instead was just pull my hair out and scream it to, into a pillow um, and quit. That's what I did my first three months of Blender. Um, but yeah, for real, it takes. Uh, it does not take 13 years. There are 100% people who make work that looks way cooler than mine that have been using 3D software for far less than 13 years, but... It's, um, it doesn't come overnight. I'll just say that. It does take some time. All right, so here we're animating some credit cards, six of which fit into the Distill Mod Wallet V2, and uh, making them fly in. Okay, now this was definitely a situation where things got a little overlappy, where I could not physically make, well, none of it's physical, obviously, but... I cannot get six cards to actually stack on top of each other in there. Also, oh, you see that little that little thing I just did? That was the wallet having like a little bit of a recoil when the cards go in. Pretty cool detail, if you ask me. Um, but yeah, so with the cards here, I could not get them to all stack up. So they're kind of. I just had to get them. I think I think like once they went into the little slot, I had them kind of go down a little bit like out of the way some of them you can actually i think if you look really closely you can see visibly intersect um, but i just made sure that the you know that top front edge did not go through because if you see one fully passing through another then there's a little bit of a issue but as long as you could just maintain that that outline going in over the next one then uh, it's not not too big of a deal because it, it happens it happens so fast um, but if I had to actually get them all to fit in there, I don't know what I would have done. I probably would have just showed them all stacking and then dropping down or something. I'm not sure, but I, th I think I realized pretty quickly that that wasn't going to be a hugely visible thing. And you can always play with your camera angles and rotations and stuff to make some of that stuff look a little bit less visible. I mean, you don't you don't want your whole design direction to be decided because you need to like hide things that you're doing wrong but you know it's okay to it's okay to make the camera work in your favor a little bit when you need to not i don't i don't even think i really did that there but um actually that's a that's a pretty visible angle to see the issues i'm talking about so i wasn't wasn't exactly hiding from it there but obviously realized it wasn't going to be a huge issue i think right there i'm adding a shape key to that curve also because when the other one bends it got in the way so I've used shape keys like a ton in the past, I don't know, two years because they just, it's a, it's a real easy way to do like just cheap deformation. It doesn't, 
like they only bend like linearly, which isn't the most beautiful thing in a lot of cases, but um, shape keys are great for just like little stuff like this. I mean, heavily used in this project. I think character animators use shape keys a lot for like uh, facial expressions and things like that. I think that's what they're more commonly used for, but great for cheap little animation in 3D. I know we used it in the, uh, if you watch the cell phone tutorial, making the button move. Um, that's something that would pretty be, be pretty easy to actually animate too, but um, shape key works just as well. Where else did I use shape keys? Obviously my POTS tutorial, I use shape keys a lot. Yeah, love, love me a good shape key. So right there, looking like I need to extend that thing out a little bit. Need to adjust that curve so it doesn't intersect itself. So this is after all the cards come into the wallet. There, yeah, you can see I'm dealing a little bit with the clipping, I think. So after all the cards come in, did I use some of those? I might have used some of those same cards and then had it move into a new position, which would have been like, you know, going through the leather to get into place for this next shot. So that could have been the same card. It looks like I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cards in there. So I might've been reusing some, had them come into place. And then, yeah, this is, so basically that little pull tab on the wall, like we'll pull out the cards that are in that main pocket. So showing that feature of the wallet. That was really the whole purpose of this animation was to uh, yeah, just basically kind of show the features of the wallet. It's a, you know, it's not just a regular old wallet that holds money and cards. It's got all these kind of cool little features, different little places. Um, and if I do end up showing some video of the wallet, I'll, uh, you'll notice that it's been in use and that's because I've been using it for, yeah, about a year, pretty much, uh, once I got the sample sent to me in order to better understand the product, I started using it and it's a really cool wallet. It's fun to play with and, and it works good and the magnets really do work. Some people don't think that I would actually like stand on a faceplate, but it does. Um, sorry, clip, you know, you can like, you could, the, the screw on a faceplate, you can, you can hang the wallet on the screw and it, it really works. So it's kind of a cool thing. Okay. So looks like I'm feeling good about the primary animation here. And then the last step of this one was going to be creating kind of a second shot where it comes into contacts and you see it like slam onto different stuff showing its magnetic features, of course. Now I will say that was another thing about this animation that was probably unnecessary. Um, I ended up doing another sunglasses animation for distill uh, where we use different separate shots for a lot of stuff. And honestly, I think that uh, basically what I was going to get is that the doing this all in one shot is kind of a toss up in terms of, is it necessary? It can be a lot more difficult to, to do like a long, and, and, and I'm calling a 15 second animation long, but to do one long shot like that of all the same thing happening, it, it can be kind of cumbersome to, uh, to have, cause then you just get your graph editor gets messy cause you're animating so many different things and it's not like a new object. It's all in the same object. And, you know, some shots you just need it to rotate around other shots. You need it to, okay. So I think what I'm doing there is maybe checking the. Checking the style, I wanted to match it. So this was me going into my key loop animation file. And I think what I'm doing is deleting keyframes of that. And then what am I doing? Bringing the wallet in maybe? Am I bringing the wallet into this or am I bringing this into the wallet? So yeah, I already had the scene built out from the key loop animation, which I'll put on the screen at some point. Or well, we kind of just watched it, but. 
but yeah, basically I was going to reuse the same lighting and everything so that it, for one, it ma it matches. I wanted it to match the previous animation I did, but then also save myself a ton of work than, you know, having to do it again. Looks like adding a little bit of a bump map there to make the money look a little more natural and wrinkled. Oh, and a little bit of a bump map to uh, give the text some embossiness. Okay, so it looks like I never went back and fixed the um, the little pull tab, and I know I did, so that's probably coming up here in a second. All right, I think I'm making, okay. So yeah, I had never made other credit cards, so I made one credit card. Now I'm gonna make a couple more. Look at me, freaking credit card designer. It's Photoshop being slow as heck. What is it, what are they doing there? Smudge? I'm looking up how to make a smudge. Yeah, basically just making some freaking sick ass swoopy swoops for my credit cards. Got a blue one. Now I bet I just made the one, the blue one, and then just changed the hue on it or something. Okay, so here going back, thinking, eh, this doesn't look quite as good as it should. Looks a little janky. Adding some better ripples there. I wish I had the wallet in here sitting next to me while I was talking about this. But it's hanging on the faceplate at my front door. Which is one of the features of this wallet, is that it can do that. And um, that is a good thing though, because if it was on my desk, you all can't see my desk right now, but it is, it is not clean. And I would lose my wallet if I had it right there. All right, so back into the uh, Yo, Photoshoppy. I think I know this is where I'm making that actual texture. So yeah, trying to think of a better way to do the... Uh... Sometimes I'm just way too much of a fan of Blender and I try to do silly things in Blender that don't need to be done in Blender, like making actual geometry to make little threads when realistically it's would make a lot more sense to just make a little texture, Derek. It's really easy. Just just draw some lines. Look at me modeling the tiniest little threads in the dumbest way possible to save myself negative time. See, look, and then I just do this. Just like erased some little lines. Make a texture, pop that in. Place it in the place. And yeah, like look how ghetto that texture looks, but look how good it looks on the model. Which that is just a way better way to work because that image is, took me two seconds to create and it's just, then you don't have to worry about extra geometry in your model. Yeah, looks, looks fantastic. Looks a lot more like the real thing too. So here we are adjusting some lighting to make it a little more exciting. Oh, look who wants to be a credit card designer, Derek. What is this? Oh, this is my little hotel key. I think it's a hotel key card. Welcome to Derek.com. Please enter your key now. I'm updating my website. It's not gonna look that much different. <laughs> Not that anybody's going to go look at it. I put dirt.com on like literally everything I do. It's plastered everywhere, but it's a pretty lame website if you actually go to it. Don't go to it unless you got a bunch of money and you want to hire me. Okay, so it looks like right there, this is the problem I was talking about. Cards intersecting each other very slightly. No one's going to notice. At least I'm holding my breath. 20 hours into this project. Too late to turn back now. <laughs> Putting it all back together, checking it out. We got the cards, we got the money. And then this little bad boy slams. There's the sunglasses, which I would later do an animation of. While it spins around, this is when the scene was going to come into frame. Um, it looks like now we're doing a little bit of camera work here. 
watch that all play through. Looking good. Smack, smack, smackity smack. And I think we'll see me do here in a second just a small little detail. Uh, the wallet would not actually do this, but I did a... Uh, oh, there's me noticing some lines. So yeah, the distill logo goes somewhere. Somewhere right about there. Picking a little spot. Realizing I'll have to apply my mirror modifier. Or just use the U. Oh yeah, there's the offset thing. I think I'd, I wanted to avoid adding my mirror modifier. Or applying it. So there I am. Yeah, I'm just putting that little... That little bump where it goes. Leave a comment if you're watching this at like 4 a.m. Because this is exactly the type of movie or <laughs> video I'd watch at 4 a.m. It's only uh, 7 p.m. here in Austin, Texas right now. And I'm chilling. This is actually kind of fun. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see uh, if people like this video, but... Yeah, I'd like to, you know, there's some freelance products, obviously, I cannot record because of NDAs and things like that, um, but Nate has been very kind about my sharing details of this project. I've been talking to him about how I recorded this for a year now, and I have not put it out, but it's kind of cool, honestly, now that I'm, like, talking to myself, drinking canned waters talking to you all it's kind of fun to like watch back and just like see the whole thing see the whole process look for opportunities to improve and hopefully this is a way for you all to learn as well about just kind of a lot of people ask me actually about like my workflow and like you know just like what to do i think people are kind of confused on like you know do i do modeling and then lighting and then animation or do you do it all together or and it always varies a little bit um, but obviously with this one, you know, I was pretty heavy in the modeling first and then and then I usually move pretty quickly into like some lighting materials and animation. I think that's just because it's fun for me. Um, I can get really like depressing to work on a project just like endlessly and just never like make a cool image. So a lot of times I will I'll sort of take a break from the modeling and just you know set up some lighting and materials just to kind of just to kind of get excited about it. I think it's always uh you know, good to good to do that. So it looks like I'm setting up a animation to render on. Oh, there I can see in my tabs. I was googling why the smudge tool is so slow. So yeah, uploading a animation to render. Currently rendering on Render Street. Sending an email to some friends. Russia, da da da, blur this out. LinkedIn, <laughs> check in LinkedIn. Probably will blur this. Leaving some comments on people's stuff because being active on LinkedIn seems to be a pretty good thing lately. Looking at my freelance work that a company I worked for shared. Back in the blender here. So I had a fingerprint texture up there for some reason. Okay, so this is the animating of the ending. So yeah, I rendered this in two sequences. So one is, I think one was going to be the wallet on a either a transparent or a white background, like we see there, and then one of them was going to be Oh, and I'm noticing right there the key wasn't, didn't look like it was rendering. Or maybe it was just off screen. Um, so yeah, there was one part of the animation that was, I wonder if I noticed something when I was rendering it right then that I needed to go in and fix. That's another great thing about using a cloud rendering service is that you can kind of let it render and watch it. And if you notice an error, you can, uh, you can stop it right away fix it and then hit re-render without it, you know, sucking up too much time on your computer. 
checking this out. Oh yeah, I was saying I rendered it into two parts. So there's transparent or white background part, and then there was another part where it smacked on to the uh, surface, you know, like in the scene. Um, and the way I do that is I just basically render a little bit of overlap with each scene. So one goes a little longer than it needs to, one starts a little bit later than it needs to, or you, you see what I'm saying. You render a little extra, you let them overlap, and then just you fade them into each other. Um, that's what I did for this one at least. That doesn't always look that great, but I think it worked pretty well on this project. So checking my scene. So on the key loop animation, it went onto like different surfaces, but I think on this one I was just gonna have it render. I was just gonna have it go straight on to the mod station, which is that white thing. It's like a metal part that they sell. Um, it looks like that's where, uh, must be where I cut it off. So I think we saw all of it though. That was like it, that was the whole animation. Um, I won't let this video run too much longer. I think I'm gonna go ahead and stop blabbing for now at least. Um, start editing this bad boy. I might do a little intro, outro type thing, but yeah. Thanks for watching, like and subscribe. Hope y'all got something out of this. Um, I'm gonna try to get this uploaded soon, but no point in talking to you about that because if you're watching it, it's been uploaded. So I'll see you next time. Peace. Thanks Nate for making cool products. Everybody go check out Distill Union. I'll leave plenty of links below, but see y'all next time. Enjoy your new year. Whatever new year is the newest when you're watching this. I love you. Enjoy your waters. Goodbye.